Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'm trying to save a dog-friendly Vermont Inn. Does that look like a floating turd? That isn't friendly to dogs. They're cramped and bare. It looks like a prison. Or to humans. Now, this black light shows up bodily fluids. What? Oh, right there. Right? Yeah. With the owner barking up the wrong tree. Water! Food! Get it out of here! Fuck you, Steve. And the staff ready to run away. Where's my money? No one gets paid. This dog-friendly inn is on his way to being put down for good. I've just never seen this shit going on before. I'm ready to burn the building down. Four Seasons Inn is located in Westover, in Vermont's beautiful Green Mountains. Former construction worker Sandy McDougall purchased the inn, which has 14 bedrooms and an adjacent kennel, as the culmination of a lifelong dream. Since I was a kid, I've always wanted to own an inn. I always wanted to be able to please people and give them a happy experience. The smell really <clears throat> does me in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. A hair was found. A what? A dog hair. A dog hair? Impossible. This is a dream come true. It's a beautiful inn. It's a great place. It's a little slice of heaven. I don't know what kind of stain that is, but I don't want to lay in it. Well, I thought it was. After only two years, Sandy's slice of heaven has turned into hell. I need to know why the phones are not working. It's been nothing but hemorrhaging money. The inn's bedrooms are almost always empty, and despite marketing itself as a dog-friendly hotel, the kennel lies unused. Currently standing into the inn, cash-wise, $1.15 million out of my butt. It's terrific. I'm glad I was able to help with that. Richard's my marketing director. I should be beating the hell out of him every day, because he sucks. Richard, what's up? With no money coming in, the inn survives with just a skeleton crew who live in the inn for free instead of receiving a salary. And then I drink. Uh, I don't get paid, so it's not really a job. It's more volunteering. I don't really call it a job. Jesus. Where's my money? I want my money. I'm not getting paid. I've hit rock bottom. As of this morning, I'm officially maxed out on three cards and $14 in my bank account. Well, I'll get the door. Sandy is genuinely a nice guy, but staff does not get paid. This is terrible. There's endless complaints about everything. Kind of reminds me of the nursing home I worked at. Why we get paid the big dollars? Fuck you, Steve. Sandy's own worst enemy is Sandy. Why the hell is the grill on? Sandy's best friend is his dog, Layla, who lives with him at the inn. Layla is an English setter. She's the greeter. She'll come in the dining room. She'll sit at your feet. The guests complain about dog hair everywhere, and it makes them feel disgusting. Dogs have hair. Dogs have dander. Dogs drool. I mean, dogs lick their own butt. You don't want them anywhere around the kitchen. Most days, there are more rooms occupied by the staff than guests. And if things don't turn around soon, this dog-friendly inn will have to be put to sleep. Sandy's ragged, beaten. We all are. If Gordon can't save this place, Four Seasons Inn is proper fucked. I can't let this hotel go. <sighs> he's running out of time, he's running out of money, and he's running out of energy. This is the death rattle. This is it. Good God, I can't be that screwed up, am I? This is exciting. I'm back in Vermont, heading towards the Four Seasons Inn. Trust me, I've stayed in a lot of crappy hotels, and I'm finally getting to stay in something sumptuous and amazing, the Four Seasons Inn. I've stayed at Four Seasons all over the world. They're fabulous hotels that define luxury, so this week should be a dream. Hello? It certainly doesn't look like a full season to me. Oof. Jesus. Hello. I was hoping for a dream, but this place looks like another nightmare. How are you, Gordon? My first name is? It's Gordon. I know what my name is. Thank you. My name is Sandy. Reception's calling sick? No, she is around. I will take care of that for you. Okay, great. Happy to uh, check in. We have 18 rooms in the end. 
The rooms are beautiful. What a fucking mess. Nice to see the bed be made. I'm surprised I'm still standing after I opened that door. I swear to God, I thought I was going to shit myself. Do you have a room that's actually ready? Yes, I do. Thank you, sir. Hey, I'm a bit late for the old party. Uh, Sandy, hello. Oh, well. Really, the one room they don't make up. Aaron? Yeah? Run. I am pissed off. Room four is done yes, and ready to right go. Go up and check. There's just no excuse for not getting the rooms done on a timely fashion. This is my worst nightmare. Sandy? Sandy? Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? Yeah, brother. I was showing you the honeymoon suite. Oh, hey, I'm here. And so. I've lost Sandy. You what? Is, I've lost Sandy. It's a bit bizarre. Sandy is very scared of his his guests because he doesn't like when people like talk down about, you know, his inn or his food and stuff like that. So he hides in the kitchen. He showed me into the room that wasn't made, and yeah, well, we're there. yeah, we oh, we're kind of in the okay. middle of doing all of them. And wh what do you do? I'm the massage therapist here, and I do hula constructing, and also the <laughs> <laughs> just say that again. The hula hoop instructing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, uh, a huge demand of Vermont for hula hoop dancers, right? Uh, not at all here in Vermont, but wow. I don't know. I kind of picked it up, and I like it. So. Um, you got another room for me? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Hula hoop instructor. Wow, fuck me, that's the first. Ah, at least the bed's made. Thank God for that. Thank you. Wow, this wallpaper, um, it's, uh, it's eye-catching, right? It came with the place. Right. Um, I have to be honest, I mean, I've been very fortunate enough to stay in lots of Four Seasons, but I haven't seen one quite like this. How long have you been affiliated? Ah, uh, we're not affiliated. We're the Four Seasons in. Oh, so you're not a Four Seasons? We're the Four Seasons in. Well, you're not a Four Seasons? No, no affiliation. Can you get away with that, legally? Yep. But they call themselves the Four Seasons. Where are the Four Seasons in? Incredible. And next month is going to be the Waldorf Astoria Lodge. No. No, I'm just... No, no. Um, well, I'm going to uh, unpack. Thank you, sir. Fuck me. Uh, four Seasons, yeah. More like four shades of shit. Wow. I've just found out that the Four Seasons Inn is about as far away from a luxury hotel as you can get. I need to find out what's really going on here. How are you? I'm good. So how long have you been here? About five months. I came here uh, to do like massage therapy and stuff, but then we didn't have like a really call for it because it was slow, so I just started housekeeping. Do you ever stay here? I, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah, I live here. How does that work, uh, salary-wise? I mean... I don't get one. <laughs> what do you mean, you don't get one? I've never gotten a paycheck. You're joking. No. So I'm you... kind of scared to ask him about it. <laughs> I'm not too wicked excited about not getting a paycheck, but I don't have a full-on conversation with Sandy about it because I am scared that he's going to yell at me and I just don't want to take it. God, so how can you treat this place professionally if you're not getting paid? In... You can't really, I guess, treat it professionally. You can't, no. Like, uh... Bloody hell. Yeah. No one gets paid. What an embarrassment. Take it, Aang. I can't believe Sandy doesn't pay his housekeeper. Oh, God. No wonder my room was such a mess. I hope the food here is better than the rooms. It's lonely in here. Where the hell is everybody? Hello. Hello. My name's Gwen. Gwen, nice to see you. Where did you pop out of? <laughs> Popped out of the kitchen. <laughs> Gonna get you started with a glass of water here. <laughs> uh, hi, Layla. <laughs> That's Layla. She kind of runs the house here, yeah, if you I'm haven't sorry, met her yeah. yet. Yeah, she seems busier than the owner. <laughs> um, entrees. I'll have the mushroom ravioli. Sounds delicious. Let's go for the salmon as well after that. Cut with apples, finish with maple glaze, and a apple risotto. And you would like that over soda. OK, great. All right. She's placing an order. Man, I'm up. I'm so nervous, I'm trying not to puke. I puked last night before service and uh, after service, and I'll probably do the same tonight. Apple risotto with the salmon, salmon seared. Not cooked through. You yes. got it, baby. I think we're going to knock our socks off with the food. Fantastic. All right, well, we have some bread for you. What do you think? Yeah, disgusting. It's just so heavy and doughy. Hey. Oh. Will you eat uh. that? Curry bread. <laughs> You'll eat anything. 
Gordon did not approve of the curry bread. Oh, Lord. Sandy, being a business owner with no culinary experience or training in any way. That's what I was saying last night, it's doughy. I don't feel that he should be back in the kitchen working. Later. Oh, oh shit, I thought you'd gone. Stay with me, girl. It's only curry bread. I'm hoping these next couple of dishes are at least edible. Send it. Flavor. Flavor. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of flavor here. Jesus. What was that? Uh, mushroom ravioli. Did the dog just throw up on my plate? I hope not. Wow. Jesus, God. How is it? Um, weird. Are the pastas undercooked? Bizarre. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's not your fault. What's the main problems with this place? Um, management. I mean, the management is Sandy, right? Yeah. I've worked for him and haven't received checks. Oh, wow. Staff have worked hard mm -hmm. and not been paid. Yeah. Wow. Jeez, that's tough. Sandy can be extremely hard to work with and for. Bizarre and weird. Good God, can this get any worse? He said it's undercooked. OK. All food in-house right now that is coming off of this menu, none of it is local, none of it is fresh. Sandy's menu is garbage. Hello, good. Good afternoon. Customer, right? Richard. Oh, Richard, I'm sorry. First time we met. And Richard, you're not a customer. What do you do? I work with Sandy on ideas for marketing. When was the last big idea you put into the well, Four Seasons? The last big idea we had was purchasing lift tickets at a discounted rate. Right. I would have fired you five months ago. Coming into the summer, what's the next big plan? I can present plenty of, plenty of ideas, but he has to accept them. I'm frustrated. I feel that the ideas I bring to him are helpful. They would work, but Sandy... He's just not listening. And here is your salmon. Excellent. Thank you, my darling. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Good God. I hope it's at least halfway good. And that is a apple risotto. Wow. What a pile of shit. That sums it up on that plate there. He's as good a chef as he is an innkeeper. Fucking useless. I can't believe I've not seen Sandy once through my whole meal. What sort of innkeeper ignores his guests and hides in the kitchen? Well, if you won't come to me, just give me that knife now. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, I'm Steve Dixon. Steve, good to see you, bud. Bill. Bill, nice good to see, see you too, bud. I'm trying to get a grasp on what I've just eaten. I know you're the owner. Yes. But you're the head chef as well. Buzz, we're working together now in town. So you're both head chefs? I've, I'm. I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not exactly sure where I fit in. It, it, it's not my menu. I'm not doing any ordering. I feel with Sandy right now, a little thrown under the bus. I feel a little betrayed right now. The risotto was sweet. What was in there? Apple juice? Apple concentrate, chef. An apple concentrate in a risotto? Yes, sir. Come on. It, it's not my menu, chef. So this is all you're doing, then? Yeah. Oh, my god. I just have five minutes on, the, yes. on my own with the owner. Would you mind? Yes, chef. You know, how do you expect something magical when it's coming out of a fucking can? 23 fucking years I wait to give them fucking apple juice concentrate. I just feel absolutely destroyed. My food is so much better than what I just fucking gave Gordon. The fuck? And you know, how am I going to go home and face my kids when they're all proud of me? And I'm like, he fucking dogged our food. You know, that's not why I became a chef. If you're in the kitchen cooking, who's running the inn? Honestly, I'm here and I'm busting my butt trying to get it to where it should be. There's no one running this inn. That's the problem. Apart from being soulless, it's rudderless. It's just a free for all. You've checked out. No, I haven't. Why would anyone come and stay here? Because it's a nice place in the country. It's like a house of madness. Yeah, but it's... It starts with you, Sandy. Everyone's saying the management, the management, the management. Everybody's blaming the management. The management's you. What a joke. I'm ready to burn the building down.
The one thing Vermont's fake Four Seasons has going for it is its beautiful riverside location. Lovely. What's that building over there? A guest house? It's a dog kennel. Is it used? No, the kennel doesn't do anything. Radiant heat floor, renewable energy with pellets in the furnace. They're cramped and bare. It looks like a prison. And what's through here? This is a giant indoor play area for the dogs. A play area? I wouldn't put my dog in a place like this. What a waste. But it all looks unused. They are. Jeez. My marketing executive sucks. I think you're right. Crazy. Word has got out that I'm in town, so the Four Seasons dining room is full of customers for the first time in months. Here we are. Dinner is served. I feel sorry for all of them. Sandy, honestly, I wouldn't even feed that to a dog. Or are you familiar with the area? Living town. Oh, nice. With everyone looking after the restaurant. Water, food, get it out of here. I'm tired of waiting. And Sandy burying himself in the kitchen. There's no one to look after the inn. You guys checking in? We are. So the servers are forced to check in guests in the middle of dinner service. The room rate's 275. Is that? Okay. Get that to you right now. Thank you very much. No problem. Is that normal there? Friday night, walking like that? You just charge him $275. Can you just go and ask the owner? Excuse me, Sandy? Yes. How much is Friday walk-in? 209. OK, because Desiree told me 275, so. How come nobody knows? We need a level of consistency across the board. From now on. 300 with tax is a joke. I don't think I've been properly trained at the desk. I'm, I feel like I'm training myself. Go and apologize to them. So it's 209 now, right? <laughs> the inn is the busiest it's been in months, but Sandy's still hiding in the kitchen, oh, playing chef. Oh, for God's sake. Upstairs, guests are experiencing the unique charm of the Four Seasons Inn. We don't have any towels, and we found some garbage under the bed. Okay. There's that and a light bulb. I just would have been really upset if my dog had eaten a light bulb. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't get over the barking dog in the background. Barking is unnerving. I can't believe an owner turned such a blind eye to the problems in his inn. I've got to stop him hiding behind the stove. You take two minutes out, go have a look at the dining room, check on things. Do you have any idea what's going on out there? Right now, I'm needed. I feel my, my need is right. right back here. Can you handle this line, Steve, for 30 Absolutely seconds? Absolutely, Chef. The owner Absolutely, out. Chef. Has a look at his business before it sinks any further. Is he for real? He's an owner, not someone who should be doing what I should be doing. Bottom line. I've just never seen this shit going on before. This is unorganized fucking chaos is what this is. I'm glad somebody has got their fingers on the fucking pulse. How was everything? My my risotto wasn't creamy so for one. And the vegetables were very, very hard, like they just had another garden. How was everything so far? <laughs> they brought out. the food out the wrong order. They brought the entree first. And, and that was after a 40 minute wait. Being told in the restaurant nothing's at the level you think it was. It's like getting kicked in the nuts. I feel like I just wanted to run into the kitchen and hide. Sandy avoiding his guests is a mad way to run it in. But it's the lack of pay that's crippling his business. I have to confront it head on. Let's have five minutes together in the lounge, please, everybody. Holy Jesus. What is about to go down now? Who in this room actually gets paid? That's why there's no standards, because nobody's getting paid, so there's no responsibilities. If you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. If you pay nothing, you get fuck all. Zero. It's not a business, it's a fucking joke. Talk to me, Sandy. Honestly, Gordon, we started off with all the good intentions and we've had every bump in the road. Because when we started out, we started out wonderfully. Stop it! It's an embarrassment. Stop the lies. There's no lies. Right? You were not booming when you first opened. Air it out, go ahead. Nobody believes it, Sandy. Where's your marketing? There's nothing to market. So what have you done? For God's sakes, man. Please. I'm exhausted. It's been nerve wracking to watch this go off in the wrong direction. You can't run a business with no infrastructure. And you can't have a business that's got nobody heading it. Enough for one day. I'm going to pick this up in the morning, night. Night, Chef. I wish I could say good night. Ah, truth hurts. 
I guess I can be one big asshole, can I? A threadbare innings. And a disgusting, smelly pillow. So far, my stay at Vermont's fake Four Seasons has been a huge disappointment. The owner doesn't know his ass from his elbow. Oh, that's nice. The staff don't get paid. <gasps> the guests are miserable. There's a stain here next to the bed. Only Lady the dog is happy here. I'm hoping a quick dip in the swimming pool will get my day off to a better start. Does that look like a present from Layla, a floating turd? Oh, my God. Layla, did you shit in the pool? There's no way I'm going in there. How about the hot tub? Slightly warm. And Layla hasn't taken a shit in it. Great news. Oh. Is it up Ah, oh, man. The hot tub's quite nice. What a gorgeous view to the river. This place has a lot of potential, but only if I can get Sandy to stop hiding from his guests and the problems here. I'm going to confront him with his worst nightmare, to wake him up to his responsibilities as an innkeeper. Morning, Gordon. Hey, guys. How are you doing, chef? Doing well. Come upstairs. Something I want to show you. Yeah? I'm thinking, OK, he's going to show me something wrong. Maybe the hole in the wallboard by the door. <sighs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. No. There's a room full of people. I thought I was going to pass out. I'm here to help this place. I really need your honest feedback. Sir, would you mind if we start with you? There was uh, a sign that I liked when we came in about all dogs have to be on your leash, and we had our dog. And we come in, and it was immediately another dog coming at us, not on a leash. And our dog's friendly, but it always takes a few minutes with new animals. Sure. I had read that it was dog friendly. I thought it was really interesting that there was a dog laying in the dining room. And as much as we like dogs, I don't want a dog in where I'm eating. Um, I agree. I think that's disgusting. There's one last person I'd like to introduce you to, Amy Loomis. This lady is the general manager of one of the Hilton brand hotels. And if there's one thing this lady knows, it's how to run a hotel. First impressions, walking well, in. At dinner, there was dog hair on the tablecloth, dog hair on the plate that we were given. I asked to speak with a manager. I was told there is no manager. We have an owner. I said I'd like to speak with them then. I was told you were too busy. I've never had the complaints that I had today. It's humiliating. It's embarrassing. It's like being flogged in the center of town. There's something I need to show you all. I need you all to put a pair of these on, please. No. No. You OK? You got a funny color? I'm hot and absorbing everything. Yeah? Yes. OK. Lights off. Now, this black light shows up bodily fluids. What? Oh. I see a round circle. I just thought, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right there, round circle. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Big one. Hmm. Sandy, can you see that? Yes. Yeah, I slept on that pillow. Oh. Um, charging guests to sleep on such filth is outrageous. The quilt. Oh. See the splashes? Oh yeah. Do you know what that is? Oh, I don't, don't want to know. 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 It begins with S. Oh. Yeah, and I'm sorry. Yeah, disgusting. But I want to show you something over by your feet. Sandy, come over here. Oh, no, no, no. Uh -uh. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. The carpet, Sandy? Yes. Oh, I mean, good. honestly, yes. madam, your feet are right on it. Yeah. Uh, look. Yeah. You see that? Yes. Yeah. Stands on the carpet, or I, I have no idea. That could be a dog, that could be a human. If it's a human, good Christmas. Just when you thought it was safe to walk in bare feet, mm -hmm. trust me, that has never, ever been clean. Uh. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Please take your glasses off. Chef, we have uh, another day to stay here today and tomorrow. And after seeing the light, I don't want to stay here tonight. I don't want to put my head on that pillow or any of the other pillows. No one would return. And the existing guests that we have want to check out. 
Thank you, madam. Please. Thank you. You're looking at a room full of customers who are looking at you saying, I can't believe you put me in there. And that's maddening. And it's embarrassing. I need some fresh air. I feel sick. It sucks to know where I am right, right now. It's horrifying. It does hurt me inside. The tears just keep coming out of my face. It's not what I wanted. I'm mortified. It's been a tough few days at the Four Seasons Inn. Um, do we have another room? Because I'm not going to be staying in here. The food is fucking hideous. This black light shows bodily fluids. Absolutely disgusting. I don't want to stay here tonight. I don't want to put my head on that pillow. The truth has been hard for Sandy to hear, but he's finally realized the damage that hiding from his customers has caused. Now that I've opened his eyes, I've got to figure out a way to make his business work. Hello, Layla. So that Sandy has no excuses not to pay his staff. You have so much weight on your shoulders, and you're being totally oblivious to what your customers need. You cannot run an inn from behind a stove. You're not the head chef. You're the innkeeper, and that can be a an amazing job. That could be an amazing prospect. That can be an exciting role. Trust okay. me, I am ready. I spent last night crying. There's no lie. This was the dream since I was a little kid. This is what I want. I love what I do. But I would love to get back to where I should be as an innkeeper. You have a potential gold mine here. Embrace it. OK? Yes, sir. I know it's hard. Yeah, you. It's normal to get upset. But just embarrassed, get mortified, your yes. Head out, out of my ass. And absolutely start building your dream. We're gonna make this work. Thank you, sir. Okay. With Sandy committed to change, it's time to get the crew involved. Let's go and have a couple of minutes outside on the terrace. Uh, to have some very important breaking news. This man, from this day on, is not the head chef. This man is going to become the innkeeper. No longer will he be burying his head inside the kitchen, ignoring issues. He'll be running his inn. You are the chef, and this is your general manager. And as a reminder to make sure we step forward and not backwards. He is not going to be needing these fucking things. <laughs> Say goodbye to Sandy's chef coats. Gordon, Gordon. Yeah. Burn that thing, get rid of that thing. He has no business wearing it. <laughs> Thank you. You may be a great guy, but you are not a fucking great chef. <laughs> Let's get that right. There's a big difference. <laughs> there is. Gordon coming here has opened my eyes to my shortcomings. I love what I do, and I need to start doing it. Got it? Yes, sir. There are some very big changes coming tomorrow. Embrace them. Get ready for it. This inn has been neglected for so long, but now I'm finally giving it the makeover it truly deserves. Come on, girl. Good morning. Good morning, Gordon. Wow. Sandy, you look incredible. Thank you, sir. Man, I feel oh, incredible. Man. How you doing? I feel liberated, to be honest with you. <laughs> you look great. Huh? With the fresh shave, new haircut, I feel amazing. I feel like a million dollars. I feel like what I spent on my inn. Uh, what do you guys think of your new innkeeper? Uh, Mr. Party, <laughs> doesn't he? You look like a proper innkeeper and an owner. Right, when I first arrived, I drove into the Four Seasons Inn, but this establishment is a one-off. It's not part of a chain, right? Yeah. No, sir. So you deserve your own name, your own identity, and something that you can be proud of. Everybody is going to know you now as... Welcome. <laughs> Ladies, Riverside Lodge. Great rooms, fresh food, and luxury kennels. <laughs> that is amazing. Layla's Riverside Lodge is amazing. The name's awesome, the sign's beautiful. It's just, uh, screams me. 
What do you think? I think it's absolutely perfect and represent something so meaningful to Sandy. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. You okay? Yeah. Be sure? I'm positive. Yeah. <laughs> Layla, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Should we go inside? Love to. This is the new reception area. My Have God. a look at this. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, what? Wow. So, let's welcome our guests in to a proper reception oh, area. This is inviting. This is warm. I love it. Is it nice? Breathtaking. Is it lovely? Gorgeous. If you have an inviting lounge, then you need the menu to go with it. Gents, come through, please. I've created a farm-to-table menu of fresh food that will give people a warm and friendly Vermont welcome. I've revamped the entire menu. Let me tell you about some of my favorites. Homemade country pate. I mean, look where we are. Look at the farm surrounding the inn. How can you not have a stunning country pate? Wonderful poutine done with a braised pork shoulder. Stunning chicken pot pie, easy to execute for the kitchen. Baked, job done. And then a stunning Vermont cheesecake. Oh, my God. How are you feeling? Very hopeful for the future now. Are you happier now that Sandy is out of the kitchen? <laughs> I am absolutely ecstatic <laughs> that Sandy is out of Good. the kitchen. <laughs> the menu is absolutely perfect. All right, now, don't be shy. Oh, my God. Wow, that pasta is a world of difference, man. Before, when people asked me where I worked, I used to hang my head and say the Four Seasons. I'm not going to do that no more. I can look them right in the eye and say I work at Layla's. It's going to be good. I'm delighted they like the new name and new menu. I can't wait to see what they think of the bedrooms. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Gone is that hideous wallpaper. Replaced with this stunning wooden feature. Oh, I love the deer. Oh, awesome. I love that. We have steamed the carpet. So gone are those hideous stains. We have a luxury bed for the dog. And what I was more depressed with than anything was the linen was hideous. We have replaced the bedding in every room of your inn with a hundred thousand dollars of organic linens. Huh? You happy? You happy? That's static. That's really overwhelming. Do you want to see another room? I'd love to. This one you're gonna love. Oh, Welcome. Wow. Oh. Room three. Look at this. Wow. Gone are those flimsy bunk beds. Give your guests some space. It's something I would want to check into. Mm. I love the new rooms. They're amazing. I actually can't wait to clean them. <laughs> I'm really excited about how everything came together. There's one more exciting thing I've got to show you, something that I feel can transform this business. You ready? Um, yes, sir. Let's go. I've just revealed yes. the new improvements to Sandy's Inn. However, there's still one more surprise I have for him that will really put Layla's on the map. Welcome to the thing that makes your lodge unique. <laughs> a new and improved dog kennel. Oh, my God. Amazing. I'm stunned. <laughs> um... Wow. We've doubled the size of these kennels. We've made them feel luxurious. We have beautiful brand new bedding. When I first arrived, these kennels felt like a prison. Now it feels like a reward or a treat. Any dog lover want their dogs to stay. Even me, I'd bring my old dogs here. Do you wanna do you wanna meet Rumpole? Rumpole? Oh. Hello, mate. Hello, bud. There he is. Come here. Rumpole, meet Layla. Come on. Hello. Hello. Hey, look. Oh, yeah. Hey, look oh, at you. Yeah. Who's that? Who's that? Hey, Rumpole. Huh? Oh, yes. Thank you. Look at that. Oh, the ball. <laughs> huh? How gorgeous. Now, this part, for me, is one of the most exciting parts. Come this way. Please come in. Oh, that's really wet. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've never seen the kennel with that many dogs and that many people. Oh, you know, my God. And that many smiles. 
Oh, this is great. You okay? Yes. You sure? Oh, yes. The dogs are here because we've organised a dog agility competition. Oh, no kidding. Wow. And all the owners are going to be checking in and staying in the inn this evening. Wow. This kind of event can be done every month, which will drive dog enthusiasts to come and stay in your stunning lodge. Absolutely. Sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. So we've livened the place up, given it warmth. Yes. And, Sandy, this is Shannon Hagum. You may recognise this lady. Oh, yes, I do. She is a luxury boarding kennel consultant. Thank she you. has very kindly donated to you $10,000 worth of consultancy awesome. that she is going to help wow. implement and get this business off the Thank ground. You. Now, let's get back to the end. Thank you, Madame. With a delicious new menu and a name of its own, Layla's Riverside Lodge is ready to open its doors and show off its stunning new look. Ladies, guys, this is the night that we come back from the dead. We've been afforded all the tools, a great front of house, a great back of house. We're going to make this rock. Yep. <laughs> yeah. some bar. If we blow this, we're, we're screwed. Good evening and welcome to Layla's. My name is Sandy. I'm your innkeeper. Hi. Follow me. I'll take you to your room. Thank you. Here we go. Very nice. Oh, wow. The renovated rooms are a big hit with the new guests. Can't wait to get under the sheets. Let me try this. Oh, yeah. She's got a little place where she can just kind of hang out and just, you know, be herself right by the window. She can look at the pool and just got her own porch. Look at that. <laughs> wow. This is awesome. Dinner's underway. It's to die for, isn't it? And at last, Sandy is spending time with his hotel guests and letting his chefs do the cooking. Good evening. How was everything? It was great. Fantastic. Tonight is the best night we've had here. There wasn't one complaint. There wasn't one plate with food left on it. This is the difference between last time that we were here and this time. It's just phenomenally different. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. <laughs> Well done staking the oven. Love the communication, yeah? Tonight it actually is like cooking in a real kitchen. No Sandy back there. Everybody's trained. Everybody's on the same page. We got great food, everything from scratch. 716. Out through the out. Big, any concerns? Good. We're good, no baby. Concerns, yes. That's what I want to have. And while Sandy's human guests are loving the food, his canine guests are finding lots to love as well. So welcome to the new kettle. Wow, right? Carrie, uh -huh. smells nice. You got friends. It's fantastic. Yeah. You have to be thrilled. Yeah. It's beautiful. I'm on cloud nine. I hope to ride this high for many years to come. I mean, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> this inn is finally on the right track, so it's time for me to say goodbye. All right, well done. Good job. Thank you, sir. Yeah, really good job indeed. And uh, do not let him back in this kitchen. No, sir. No, okay. sir. Right, tough one. We had our highs and lows, but you are really starting to grasp yes. the potential. One no little surprise, everybody's going on payroll tomorrow. Everybody. They're all going to have a paycheck every week. Really? Yes. That's music to my ears. I'm pleased to hear it. Listen, good luck. Thank you, sir. Take care, man. Take care. Gordon, save my lodge, save my ass, save my life. Sandy's running around like a, a new man. He's starting to look and sound like an innkeeper. And if he keeps this up, this gorgeous inn can become an amazing place for a great weekend. Rubble, let's go. Come on, come on, bye. Come on, you can't stay, come on. Come on. I know the room's nice, but we've got to go home, come on. You lazy fucker. Come on, we've got to go. We have to go. I know it's comfy, come on. You, young man, are lazy. Home sweet home. Oh, I know. This way. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Let's go. Here we go. Yes. Do you know what, Ron Paul? Sometimes you can teach an old dog new tricks, or at least make him take a bath. <laughs> Coming up. Have a seat. Sandy has shocking news for his staff. <laughs> Good morning, Layla's Riverside Lodge. Since my visit, business at Layla's has been booming, and everyone is sharing in the uh, inn's success. It's 500 bucks. Tomorrow, W2, heavy rock, OK? Hey, we got a great team, and you're part of it. My staff means the world to me. Every week, you get paid. Fantastic. That's all I ever wanted to hear, man. Because it's a team effort. You've got to have people that believe in you. 
every week you get a paycheck. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Gordon, from the bottom of my heart. Oops. If it hadn't been for you, I would not be here. That's the truth. Thank you. And now, all the staff are back in Sandy to make Layla's Riverside Lodge a success. Oh. Rich, you said you'd take it for the team, brother. Here we go. Finally, with something to market, Richard has taken his sales technique to a whole new level. Oh, yeah, baby. Come on, Rich. Let's go have a look at the side. Wait, come, come, come here and hold my paw. <laughs> Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'll be investigating a murder mystery in the Idaho town of Coeur d'Alene. But the victim isn't a person. It's the Roosevelt Inn. <coughs> there are plenty of clues as I dust for fingerprints. It's like someone's ashes in an urn. And uncover horrific stains. Oh, God. Brilliant. The prime oh, suspect now. is the owner a Sherlock Holmes wannabe who disguises himself as a chef. We must cook the fabulous food. But can't even boil an egg. That was raw. <laughs> You're a fucking joke. I'm gonna kill him. Just talk to my hand. I've got to solve the case before there's another victim, the owner's marriage. I just feel like I'm, I'm gonna suffocate. Surrounded by stunning lakes and close to two major ski resorts, Coeur d'Alene is one of Idaho's premier vacation destinations. It's also home to the Roosevelt Inn. The inn is a 16-bedroom converted schoolhouse owned and run by one of its former students, John Hoff. The Roosevelt Inn is the first hotel I've ever actually owned. I was up here signing the papers and I called my wife, Tina, and I say, we now own the Roosevelt Inn. And all of a sudden I hear this, because <laughs> she started crying. I did not want to buy the hotel, but John really did. I have told John many times that he won't be cold in the ground, and I'm on my way home to Kentucky. Okay, no, I'm not going to cry anymore. I'm so tired of crying. Stop, stop, stop. The Roosevelt Inn is not just hell for Tina. It's hell for the guests who have to put up with the consequences of John's eccentric behavior. Sorry, we're not trying to be a pain. Yes, you are. I would say that the hotel is struggling because it's dated, it's old. God, it smells funny there, though. It smells old. Probably because it is old. And the food coming out of the inn's shoebox-sized kitchen is as bad as the decor. But not Finally, oh, strong, strong fish flavor. Oblivious to the problems, John's performance never stops. I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. I'll ask questions, you'll give answers. And I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. As John is more focused on playing dress up. How was that, Watson? Than on being an innkeeper. John refuses to grow old gracefully. It's Halloween for John every day. He loves to dress up. It's the curse! It's the bloody curse! Once a month at the Roosevelt, we put on a murder mystery and dinner. How's everything going in here for you? Fine. Okay. I basically do everything. Uh, you wanna finish making up this bed and I'll do the bathroom? Okay, great. I feel my dad doesn't appreciate my mom. My mom works three times harder than my dad does. There are times that I'll come in and she's out busy doing something and he's sitting on the couch reading a book. As the business has suffered, so has John and Tina's relationship. We actually had to go through marriage counseling. I don't think John understands the sacrifice I've made. Unless I can get this place on the road to recovery, John and Tina will lose everything. If I lose the Roosevelt, I don't just lose my job, I lose my home. I become unemployed and homeless in one fell swoop. Dang it! I don't think we're gonna pull out of this one. I'm here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I seriously hope this place is better than the other shitholes I've stayed in. Oh my god. Look at that. They say all publicity is good publicity. But with a billboard that old fashioned, I'm not so sure. You're fucking joking, aren't you? Come on. The Roosevelt Inn bed and breakfast. It's like something out of the Adams family. The Roosevelt School. The place looks grim from the outside. 
Hello. Welcome to the Roosevelt. Good to see you. I recognize that voice. You're Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Well, <laughs> good to see you. My God, look at those chairs there. Are they from the school? They are. Those came out of the first grade classroom. Well, look, you almost fit. A, a reception for dwarfs or just... <laughs> first impression from the outside. It's almost like walking into a funeral parlor. Oh. It smells like shit as well. What is that? Is that... Did the dog do a... Oh, boy, I sure hope not. Oh, Rohan. Jesus, man. Jesus. This is our dining room. Who's the chef here? I saw a billboard of a guy with the most hideous hat on, <laughs> covered in trees and, like, this six-foot hat. That's <laughs> me. It's kind of uh, grown into Jean-Pierre, the mad French chef of the Roosevelt. Because you're in Coeur d'Alene, is a French name town, you know, so we must cook the fabulous food and wear this outfit. <laughs> now, you'll see uh, school photos yes. down the hallway here, and these are of kids that went to school here at the Roosevelt, and the ones with the arrows pointing at the really cute, adorable little boy. That's me, of course, because I went to school here. Oh, you went to school? My elementary school. Who wants to live in their old school? It's like getting a detention that never ends. The guests get to hang out down here with the dogs and watch TV. You are kidding me. You can't smell those dogs? Oh, yes, I can. The dogs, actually, believe it or not, Gordon, are one of the highlights here. Now you're sounding deluded. What's next? Our little ballroom or our multi-purpose room. Oh, come on. Rohan, you're not supposed to be in this room. Don't you think this place could at least had some form of makeover? Well, sadly, Gordon, we renovated this room four years ago. This is new. Stop. No. This room looks like it was last decorated in 1908, not 2008. And how much did you spend on this? 54,000. 54,000? Five, four. Yeah. Not 5,400, 54,000. I know, lovely, huh? Christ almighty. And does it generate money? No. I can't believe anyone would want to rent that space. It's hideous. I'm dying to have a look upstairs. It can't get any worse. It could get worse. And what's your uh, occupancy across the year? Probably around mid-20s. 20% 20 across the board. Ouch. <laughs> I am amazed you find it so funny. This is your room. OK. What's with all the pink? It's like someone threw up strawberry milkshake all over the place. My room has two levels, each as bad as the other. Oh. Everything looks like we're in a time warp. I mean, it's so dated. So, my room, how much did you pay to stay in here? Uh, $319. $319. Bloody hell. I'm speechless. 13-year-old <laughs> decor, $319 yeah. a night. Can I ask you something? Fire away. Why do you think everything's a big joke? Because you're very critical. I'm here to get this place right. But what I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. I'm going to give you the truth, and if you don't like that, then I'm out of here. What do you want me to do? Get no, angry just, and punch nah. you? You want to punch me? Uh, you go well, first. Maybe I do want to punch you a little bit, but I can become physically very, very violent and have, in the past, people get hurt. Here's your keys. John. John! You can't just walk away. Where are you going? Since I checked into Idaho's Roosevelt Inn, I've been unimpressed by the horrible decor. What's with all the pink? It's like someone's vomited everywhere. And the dated event space that smells like wet I mean, dog. The dogs actually are one of the highlights here. But the biggest problem here <laughs> is the owner, John, who seems to think it's funny that he's in is a disgrace. The only time he stopped laughing was when I confronted him with how bad things really are here. What I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. Here's your keys. John! You can't just walk away. While John hides from the truth downstairs, I'm going to have a closer look at my room. It's like someone's ashes in an urn. An absolute mess. Ah, shit, no. That's what the rug's on the floor for. Just gross. Look at the dust on there. Most disgusting of all... Oh, shit. ..is the dust magnet hanging over my pillows. <laughs> I hope I'll get a sense of what's really going on here from John's wife, Tina. Gordon, this is my lovely wife. How are you? I'm stressed out. What hotel were you running before this? 
I was running a dental office. I worked in a dental office. I wasn't running anything that, except my home. <laughs> so why would you go from sort of teeth to a hotel? Because he bought a hotel. <laughs> so you bought the hotel. It was my negotiation. You negotiated. You both bought it. Yes. Willingly or unwillingly? Unwillingly. I was very happy and content with the life that we had. So when John told me that we were buying the Roosevelt, I burst into tears. How much did you buy it for? 700,000. 700,000, how much did you spend on it? We owe 1,100,000. Oh, so you haven't paid back the debt yet? No. To the bank owner, huh? Yeah, no, the bank owns us. God. We sold our house we sold had here. Cashed in a 401k, everything we had. Oh my word. Uh, where's your house now, what you live in? We live Up in the attic. The building. This is my hell. I have had oh. terrible experiences here. <laughs> Business experience, financial hardship, everything's wow. just falling apart here for me. <laughs> you seem serious, you seem joking. It's almost like you're playing at it. It is kind of an entertainment, though, <clears throat> to a certain degree. Uh, $1.1 million, that's an expensive entertainment. Well, yeah. I didn't realize it was this bad. How's the relationship? We were in a rough place. We went through marriage counseling, what was that, four or five years ago? Because of this business? Oh, yeah. And still working together seven days a week. Yes, twenty-four seven. You're Sleeping a brave in the same lady. Bed. I'm ready for something to change. I'm ready for anything at this point. I just feel like I'm. I'm gonna suffocate. I'm gonna get my uh, bag unpacked and I'll uh, I'll catch up with you later. Thank you. Tina looks ready to bail out, and all John can do is laugh. He thinks being over a million dollars in debt is entertainment. I think this marriage is in as much trouble as the inn. Clearly in denial, but. More importantly, a man that won't man up and take responsibility. I've been told that tonight, the Roosevelt Inn is holding a murder mystery dinner. It's an event they host once a month. I have a feeling it's gonna be hard to forget. And if you'll head on into there, I'll get you all checked in and ready to go. You look fabulous. We usually always have a lot of fun with this. We're going to continue to have fun with this. Are you addressing that for the ceiling? I play the part of Sherlock Holmes, old man. You're playing an Englishman. I am playing an Englishman, and I even have the pipe to go with it. I've studied this accent long and hard. In fact, mine is better than your British accent. I actually don't know where Gordon got his accent. He obviously doesn't practice it very much. Mine is far more authentic than his is. Absolutely, yes. Wow. While John prances around as Sherlock Holmes, I wonder what Tina does during these events. Oh, my God. What have you got on? This is crazy. What this happened is, to you? It's murder mystery night, sir. It's gone from an inn to Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> I mean, honestly. It'll be my job this evening to cook your dinner. So while John gets to play Sherlock Holmes, his wife is stuck in the kitchen. Wake up, John. This is not the 1800s anymore. John definitely liked dressing up more for the murder mysteries because he's not in the hot kitchen. He's out there hamming it up with the guests, playing Sherlock Holmes. OK. Right, um, I'm not too sure what to make of all this. It's a little bit bizarre. Slightly weird. I wonder if this event even makes any money. Is this profitable? It is profitable. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, we made $200 tonight. $200 for all this work? And are they all staying over? Oh, no. Most of the locals, you know, when they come for a murder mystery, they usually don't do an overnight. Clearly, tonight's about feeding John's ego, not filling his bank account. Oh, well, that, that could explain it, then. No, no, oh, here now, here now. Oh, my word. Oh, I, I say. Oh, my fucking God. Here, come to me, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears the game is afoot. You know, their goal with the murder mysteries has always been to get people in, but if I'm not filling the rooms, what's the point? And I would have gone away with it, too, if it wasn't for you and your meddling guests. Yes. Well, there you have it. Brilliant of all of you. Thank goodness that's over. It's time to find out from John what on earth he thinks he's doing. Sit down. You must be shattered. I'm tired. I bet you are. Stick a fork in me. That was mad. Was it mad? Yeah. You're in the kitchen, busting your ass off, working hard to sell all those people. And, John, you were out prancing around like a sort of actor. So this is the thespian thing. It's, it's an inn, it's not a theater. But you seem to enjoy it. You have to force yourself to like doing it. I mean, it's on stage for three hours. Ian. The problems at the Roosevelt are elementary. Can I just have a word with you on your own? Do Certainly. Oh, sure. This place is sinking because John refuses to take anything seriously. You love 
been an entertainer. Don't you dare tell me that that is hard work. This whole fucking thing was put together for your fantasy. Well, that's kind of what this night is. It is entertainment. We put on a show. You're pretending to be Sherlock Holmes, and upstairs, we're empty. You're in the shit financially. We're in ruins. And if you put the same amount of effort into filling this place, just one room booked tonight would have made more profit than the whole murder mystery and all that work that went into it. I mean, this is insane. And you prance around like some fucking idiot while your wife is slaving away in the kitchen. Do you have any care in the world apart from yourself? When you get a psychology degree. Oh, when I get You come and tell me what's wrong with me. Here we go. You obviously think you're a psychologist. Big denial again. No, I'm not in denial. I just don't know what you want. It's only your own fucking stupidity to why we're in the shit this far. Well, that is probably true. So then man up and act responsible. OK, I'm done with that. Oh. I'm done with that interview. Oh. Sherlock. Over. No, no. Is that, does that massage no, your ego a bit more? You know, no, just talk to my hand, you know. I talk to my hand. Oh, what have, a have fucking a idiot. Have a You're good not night. 10 years old. You need to grow up and stop running away from the truth. Fucking joke. It was a rough first day at Idaho's Roosevelt Inn. Let me out. And last night proved to me that owner John needs to stop dressing up. Wait till I get going. And start growing up. You prance around like some fucking idiot. And take some responsibility for the problems at the inn. It's only your own fucking stupidity to why we're in the shit. I'm done with that. But John didn't want to listen. Just talk to my hand, you know. I talked to my hand. Oh, what a fucking idiot. Today, I'm going to have another go at getting through to him before he heads into the kitchen to prepare lunch. You're losing money. You're on this treadmill of mistake after mistake. We may be in a elementary school, but you're not a child. And I would really wish if you stop acting like one quickly. Is that possible? Sure. Show me what you got. Can you get that? I don't want to cook for Gordon. I mean, first of all, he's got a huge ego of his own, so, you know, nothing anybody else does is going to be any good. I don't even want to cook him a thing. How are we doing over here? Word has spread that I'm in town and the dining room is full. We're all having the same five course set menu cooked in the inn's tiny kitchen. There's a shrimp cocktail to start you off. Thank you. Lady. That's gnarly. That's ghastly. Wow. What the watery bits, what's that bit there? Um, that's probably the tomato juice. Unless it's condensation from the shrimp. Condensation? Was it frozen? Yes. Oh shit. Man, yeah, they're warm. That's a sad looking shrimp. That's not a good start. Okay. I will take that for you. And everyone else seems to be hating it too. How can you fuck up a shrimp cocktail? Okay, here's Gordon's. Pecan, crusted a salmon. Is it fresh salmon? Frozen. Frozen. That has to be the saddest looking plate of salmon anywhere in North America tonight. The seasoning is dreadful. It's very dry and <clears throat> Would you like me to take it for you? Yes, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take everything. Tastes great to me. I'm going to kill him. I just want Gordon to take a long walk off a short pier. I want him to fall into a very deep pit so he can't get out. This is pathetic. Can John cook anything? Can he cook an egg? He can cook an egg. Could you ask him just to boil me an egg? Sure thing. Soft-boiled egg. He can't possibly mess up a soft-boiled egg, can he? Soft-boiled egg for corn. OK, what? Soft-boiled egg. What? I'm just like going, wow. No egg cup. No. I'll make my own egg cup. OK, now it's bells. <laughs> <laughs> Is this really happening? He can't even boil a fucking egg. <laughs> fucking thing's still got feathers on it. <laughs> Could have probably cooked that another two minutes. <laughs> I am absolutely ready to boot Gordon Ramsay out of my inn. Fire away, buddy. Are you having a laugh at your family's expense? No. Big tall hat, big jacket, and you can't boil a fucking egg. You want a fried egg? You want French toast, too? How about some pancakes? What the fuck are you doing? 
You don't care, do you? I do care. You're a fucking joke. Those are what we refer to as fighting words. Gutsy thing to do, especially in a kitchen full of sharp knives. It has never been a joke for me. Ever. Come play at my school. I'm the headmaster. You're acting like an absolute idiot. No, but you're no. in my house. That's right. I'm disgusted at your performance. Your big problem is you can't handle the truth. You don't like hearing it. You don't even know me. You know it. It's just a joke. Think about your wife. You're in to $1.1 million of debt. You're forcing her to live in hell. She's telling me that. I just think, over the last 13 years, of what you've fucking done, and not to you, to everybody else standing behind you. I'm tired of hearing that. I don't need it anymore. Screw it. I really don't care if he leaves. Fuck, man. I had a horrible night's sleep on the couch because I couldn't sleep in my bed. I really need a hot shower. Oh, shit. Fucking hell, this water's freezing. I need to open John's eyes, but he walks out every time things get difficult, so I've got another plan. Have you got two minutes? We do. There's something I'd like to uh, show you, uh, both in my, uh, my room. Oh, crap. What now? What's wrong now? Please, come through. Oh. There's the jury, and they're going to hang us. Clearly, you recognize some of your guests from the past six months. We do. I think feedback is critical. First impressions walking through the door. A lot of decorations. It's kind of outdated. Outdated, yeah. Too much. A lot Too much. going on at once. I'd like to go on to the food. Um, the general consensus? Disappointing. How was it? Yeah, it was. It, was too, it wasn't the value that we paid, honestly. Show of hands, how many of you would return and stay here again, please? None of our guests would return. I'm kind of speechless. I, I'm, I, uh, I didn't expect this. I thought, it was, I thought we were better than that. That's the most valuable information you've had in 13 years. I thought we were a lot better than this, and that, that is uh, a view that is changing. You've got to put yourself in the guest position. You know, you give me feedback on everything you've seen and experienced, but there's something I'd like to point out that none of you have seen. Please. Would you be so kind to put a pair of these on, please? Oh, my gosh. Can this just get any more terrible? I don't think so. Glasses on. OK. This black light is going to show up any bodily fluids. Let's start with the, uh, the pillows, shall we? Get there. like someone urinated on it. Absolutely disgusting. If you think that's bad. Oh! <laughs> this kind of stuff hasn't been weeks. That's, that's years. Oh. oh, my. Absolutely hideous, horrified, disgusted, grossed out. Kind of want to go vomit. But you kind of trust that things are going to be you have the right to and you, that. And you have the... This is just as bad as it can possibly be. I mean, I'm disgusted. I... <sighs> How does that make you feel? It Dirty. makes me actually feel sick to my stomach. Oh. That I slept on. Glad that. I took a shower, but now I'm wondering about the shower. I'll let you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all very much. Thank you. This is me. I mean, I've put my heart and soul into this. <laughs> it's just so embarrassing. <laughs> I had to do this because you won't listen to me. And John just laughs at every problem. I understand. I understand now. I'm worried about Tina. Hearing from the guests and seeing those stains seem to hit her pretty hard. Tina? Yes. Have you got two sex? I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help you. I'm just... Banging my head against the wall with John. Well, I know what we do is not perfect, but I thought what we did was better than that. John's got to get out of this bubble. He's an innkeeper. But he's constantly joking and shrugging responsibility. And now he has to start looking at himself.
the thing that probably bothers me the most is John just refuses to understand my need to have my part of the dream. I don't like living and eating and breathing my work 24-7 and never, ever having a place to go that I can get away. Are you not happy? No. I'm not. <clears throat> At the end of the day, I usually lay down in the bed and I know this isn't what I wanted. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. I'm ready to just walk away from this and just forget it. I want to leave. I want to get out of here and go away. You can't give up. 13 years of being unhappy is not a molehill, it's a mountain. You have a voice. You've got to stand up. You absolutely have the right to be happy. I mean that. I guess maybe I needed somebody to say, you have a right to be happy. So that was good. Thank you. I'll see you later. Okay. I promise you I'll make a difference. And I mean that. Last night, John's wife, Tina, was at a breaking point. But you're not happy? No. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. After talking, I realized how bad things really are here. And I promise to make things better because Tina truly deserves to be happy. Good morning, darling. Good morning. How are you? I'm, I'm here. You're here. <laughs> um, let's catch up, shall we? Let's get out okay. of this little cubby hole. OK. Um, maybe downstairs. I can't believe that John and Tina have spent $60,000 on a ballroom that they never use and smells like dog. Looking at this inn, there's a, a huge missed opportunity. The potential of this room is extraordinary. And this has to be used as a way to get people into the bedrooms upstairs and make money. Exactly. How often do you use this room? Twice a month. Four nights. That's crazy. It is. Have you ever thought about employing a wedding planner to actually book this place out? I have one that I'm working with. I've been working with her for just about a year now. I don't pay her a salary. Right. It's her wedding. If we score a wedding, we both get paid. So yeah. she's motivated to sell it. For me, it's a big missed opportunity. You know, once you've held an amazing wedding and you've got such great feedback, it just spreads. OK, if there's someone I want to see, um, I'll see you later. Okay. Yeah? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. This does not stack up. I'm going to go meet the wedding planner because there must be something that John and Tina aren't telling me. Hi. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise. Where should we start? Well, you want to come on over and we'll have a seat? And... Shall we? Uh, yes, Thank come on you. over. The Roosevelt's. Um, what would you say the key problems are? It's dated. It's um, it's hard to sell 10-day-old bread. Right. It's, you know, brides are young. They're sophisticated. They're on their phones. They're seeing what the rest of the world is doing. You know, a big thing with selling the ballroom is the colors. That only matches a tiny percentage. You can either go burgundy, ivory, or navy blue, and those colors are so dated anyway. Dark. It's terrible. And then you walk downstairs and the smell. I had one girl literally say, I've got to go upstairs. The smell is going to make me sick. John doesn't strike me as someone that I'd want to put my wedding in his hands. As a host, how is he? We have had some issues um, last summer with him coming out and dancing. At the guest wedding? Yes. Like ballroom dancing or? It was more like Macarena type line dancing style. Oh my god. I mean, how awkward was that? It was mortifying. Oh my god. If you just bear with me whilst I make some changes. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, you are the key to their success going forward. Would you give them one more chance? Okay. I'm in. Thank you. Good well, to see you too. Good to see Thank you. you. Thank you, darling. Now that Misty is on board to help the Roosevelt, I'm going to make one last attempt to see if John is ready to change. How are you feeling? I'm not here to hurt your feelings, John, but you have a huge defense mechanism. I have an attitude. I want to help, but you are a very tough, stubborn, selfish individual to get through to. Yeah, truth hurts. It's not a sign of weakness to put your hand up and ask for help. I don't want to butt heads. I don't want to butt heads either. Gordon, I've got two options here. I 
can close up the business, walk away from it, give it to the bank. The other option is, I know I've done this to myself. I've done this to my wife. Uh, I've got to find a way to get out of it. This has been your dream, your ambition, and she just followed suit. You're correct. You have one amazing, loyal lady there. I don't deserve her. I'm a pig sometimes, there's just no doubt about it. Yeah. I'm trying to change that. She's not the one that should be suffering because of what I did. And I haven't even considered that in years. Let's start making this place better. I need you committed. I want the help. I want to make this work. Coming up, has John's change come too late? I've, I've quit dreaming. Now that John's finally turned the corner... I'm a pig sometimes, trying to change that. It's time to sit down with Tina and get to the heart of their relationship. I'm so pleased that we've got to a place that we can start making steps in the right direction. But this is a family run in. And you need your time out and you need to cut your dear lady slack. You need to learn the importance of being a happy couple. What have you got to say? Yeah. We've been so wrapped up in this and everything we do that don't even know where to where to go with romance anymore. It's like I'm so self-consumed with all of this. Just the ability to just have a conversation with you, understanding my my feelings. I have wishes and ambitions. There are things that are important to me that are vitally important to me. You have to support that. If you're not prepared to support each other in each other's roles, then it's never, ever going to work. You need to be happy together. I want to know what your dreams are again. I haven't heard a dream from you in years. I don't even know what your dreams are anymore. I don't know what my dreams are anymore. <laughs> I've, I've quit dreaming. I want you to start dreaming again. Mm. And then I want you to share those dreams with me. Because I love you. I know you do. I told all my girls they were princesses. And you are too. I haven't treated you much like royalty. I do feel that Gordon has helped John appreciate me more and see what's going on inside of here should matter to him. Now that they're talking again, I want to give Tina and John a lesson in something else they've not done well for a long time. Wow. Cooking. In any inn, country, hotel, it's all about comfort. And what I learn immediately from you is that you're trying way too hard. You've got a shoebox of a kitchen that you can't swing a cat in. You shouldn't be cooking five course meals in there. Okay. You're not a chef. No, I'm not. You shouldn't be on a billboard. I shouldn't be. A delicious home-cooked meal. That's all I'd expect to see. That's all I'd expect to smell when you come through that door. So I've put together a list of dishes for the whole week. Something you can cook in one pot. Fabulous. Let it cook itself. <laughs> really fabulous. Okay. These are my recipes. Uh, I'm proud of them. Don't start improvising, changing. Just follow them. They will work. Half an hour to get the chili on. Yeah. Fabulous. Sweet. Nobody comes here, John and Tina, expecting a five-course meal. The food was an amazing discovery that it could be so simple, so easy, so delicious. I'm glad that Gordon is in my kitchen. Tomorrow is a new dawn for the Roosevelt. And my goodness, are we going to turn the page. My team worked all night to bring the hotel into the 21st century. Now it's time to reveal the new Roosevelt Inn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, Gordon. You're spring in your step, John. How are you feeling? Wonderful. Good. Let's go. Okay. Come in, come in, come in, please. OK. 16 rooms, 32 guests. This hotel should be full. Oh, Welcome nice. to your new honeymoon suite. Oh, wow. Oh, Holy oh, my wow. Oh. John, how do you feel? <laughs> this is incredible, Gordon. A uh, honeymoon suite, <laughs> decluttered, bright, elegant. Oh. We were literally two centuries back in time with what we were doing in these rooms, and we are suddenly into now, today. It's amazing. Oh. John and Tina, I'd like you both to go upstairs. A room that will be great for room service, to have a bit of romance. 
Oh, this is just truly beautiful. Now, coupled with selling those rooms, the big asset that was underused in many ways was downstairs. Truly, that's been a huge disappointment for me. Come with me now, and let yes. me show you the new stunning Roosevelt yeah. wedding space. <laughs> oh my God. Hey. I thought we had something that would be viable to help build our business, and it wasn't. It was dragging it down. Oh, good grief. Oh, holy oh, cow. Look at this. Whoa. OK, this is stunning. This is amazing. Wow. Um, Absolutely oh amazing. Goodness. I love okay. the color scheme. This is stunning. Oh, my gosh. Yes. This is the direction we need to be going in. This is the next step up, and I am extremely grateful. And I don't want to see a dog. A dog's hair, a dog's chew, anywhere in this space. Understood. Now, this room should propel this business to greater heights. It has to be your biggest marketing tool. Because when you got the wedding booked, the guests should book every room upstairs. This space and the revenue it can bring into the Roosevelt could definitely be the game changer that we've been looking for. I'd like to um, point your attention to those wonderful plates and all the glassware on the tables. That's a special gift to you worth 50000 no way! Really? <laughs> You've now got, you know, a solid foundation to host the most amazing wedding. Beautiful, beautiful. Man. Now, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oh my God. Okay. Please. Oh, this amazing. is just... Cool. You may recognize this lady. <laughs> oh, yes! Yes, lady! <laughs> Look at our new space! I hope Misty's going to give us a second chance. What strikes you now walking through that room? What's the first thing that hits you? It's just, it's natural, it's its modern, it's what the brides are looking for. They're sophisticated, they're young. This is what they want. And does it show sort of versatility in a way that it can be adapted to suit different colors? Absolutely. We can put any color in this room and it'll be wonderful. Yay! This is gonna sell mm -hmm. itself. How does it smell? It smells wonderful! <laughs> now, here's the good news. She is prepared to give you one more chance to become Coeur d'Alene's number one venue for hosting weddings. One more surprise, John and Tina. Missy's not just here to visit. The Roosevelt is hosting a wedding tonight. Tonight? Owners of the Roosevelt Inn, John and Tina, have come a long way from when I first met them. Personally. Because I love you. And professionally. I want to make this work. And I've just surprised them with a true test for their business. The Roosevelt is hosting a wedding tonight. Wow. Tonight? When Gordon said we had a wedding tonight, instant gut-clenching terror. You're going to be cooking, serving just simple, elegant food. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, good luck. Take you ladies up to the room. All right, go on in, ladies. Ooh, I like that bed. <laughs> oh, my dress. Guests are just starting to arrive. Hi. I gave John and Tina a couple of simple but delicious wedding recipes that they could cook in their tiny kitchen, and that I knew the guests would love. This evening is going to be huge for us. You're feeling that that really wound up sense inside yourself, and it's like, holy cow. Donald, Nicole. As the couple exchange their vows downstairs, upstairs in the kitchen, John and Tina are proving they are there for each other when it matters. I give you all that I am. I give you all that I am. And you may kiss your bride. You're that side, I'm this side, and we go bang. And then we go bang. And then, okay, so now we. Plates and hands, guys, yep. and downstairs. Now, so... Plates and hands, serve it up. Okay, ladies, let's go. Grab them and go. Grab them and go. For the first time ever, the food at the Roosevelt is putting a smile on people's faces. Try and bunch them up a little bit. It just makes it look so much neater. Including Tina's. Breathe and talk and, OK, I've got this. Awesome. We're in a nice rotation here. John and Tina are a great team when they communicate properly. OK, good. And I think the buzz they get from tonight will encourage them to keep working on their relationship. How you doing? We're rocking along here. I love it. Plates are going away, this Steven. Is it's the best thing I've ever had. Well done. Okay. How do you feel? <laughs> Where's John? It. Well done. 
Oh, thank you. First time you've actually cooked. Yes. Yeah? From yes. scratch. From scratch. For an amazing wedding. Well done, thank both of you. Thank you. It's been a great night thanks to John and Tina's teamwork. You guys did it, even ahead of schedule. <laughs> you can do this. I'm really hoping that our future with Misty and, and our wedding business just goes through the roof. Time to go. I'm gonna be a bit sad to leave this place. I think John and Tina have done a bloody good job tonight. And more importantly, I think the whole wedding has opened their eyes to the huge potential they've got here. Tonight, the Roosevelt is fully booked for the first time in years, and the inn is back on course for success. It's been a hell of a week. Yeah. Yes. I tonight proved that you both can pull this off. Once we got the system going, it went very well. Stick together. All right, we'll do it, like Lou. You've got every chance now. Good luck. You can have a happy, happy ever after, let me tell you. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Thank you Do again. not sneak downstairs to that dance floor. <laughs> Not even heading yes. in that direction. Night, night. Oh, man. Oh. So gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. Oh, there's an upstairs. Thank you, Gordon Ramsay, for giving us this opportunity. This experience, obviously, is not meant to be easy, but in the end, worth it. So thank you very much. It was nice to say goodbye to him tonight. <laughs> And I look forward to seeing him again, actually. I'm checking into a very unusual location. A castle in the middle of Ohio, run by a mother and son. You know, you get a little overwhelmed and you don't know how to proceed. She takes on all the responsibility. Have you ever told anyone how much stress is on your shoulders? No, I pretty much keep it in. And he doesn't know how to help. I can't tell you business-wise that Jimmy really has any strengths at this point. If I can't get through to him, this hotel will be in serious jeopardy. Surely you must know that this is not right. No, it isn't. Located along the Black Fork of the Mohican River is the small town of Loudonville, home to Landol's Mohican Castle. After selling their profitable printing business, owners Jim and Marta Landol built the castle on a lush 1,100-acre estate in the heart of rural Ohio. Jim and I ran a coloring book publishing business. We did sell it. I assumed we would retire, uh, but Jim had other ideas. <laughs> My dad told himself that if he ever made any kind of money someday, he would build a castle. And he made money and built a castle. Between the castle and the restaurant, the official total was in the $6 million range. In uh, 2008, our beautiful restaurant burned to the ground. My husband, he had let the insurance lapse. Unfortunately, it was only four days prior. It was a very, really bad day. We burned down in May and Jim and I separated in June. We were divorced within the year. Jim retired and now it's all on my shoulders. Marta does everything here. She works, oh my gosh, harder than anybody I think on the property. She runs around like crazy. There's not a day that she's not working from sunup until sundown. She could be retired. She could be relaxing somewhere, enjoying her grandkids. But instead, it's almost like she's a prisoner here. So I think that we really need Jimmy to manage the property. Jimmy's the general manager in title only. He's more the cook here on the property. So it's two, uh or one tablespoon of Worcestershire, or whatever you call it. We don't really honestly take him seriously, but we've never had a reason to, I guess, take him seriously. Are we supposed to clean up now? Because he's the baby born with a silver spoon in his mouth, that everybody's always done everything for him. What is honey glazed carrots? I've actually never made those. Marta does baby Jimmy, and that causes Jimmy to not really have to step up and be a general manager. We keep thinking, what, what can we do? What can we do to get more, you know, more customers in the restaurant? What can we do to get more people at the hotel? 
it has such potential. One of my main concerns is that I do want to be able to uh, make this place successful and be able to um, retire, but it is a struggle, you know, because a lot of times I don't see a lot of light at the end of the tunnel. I'm here in Ohio. I'm heading to a castle. That's right, a castle. But it's actually built by a local businessman. He's no longer involved, and he's left the property to his ex-wife and his son to run. Here we are. Castle up ahead. Look at that. Wow. The grounds are stunning. O-M-G. Look at this place. What an amazing setting. Really beautiful. Hello. Hello. My goodness me. <laughs> Gordon, yes. nice We're to see you. So nice to meet you. Um, this place is incredible. Uh, when was it built? They started construction in 1996. We opened in 2002. Wow, how long have you been here? I've been here for 10 years. And all this sort of junk, what happens to that stuff? This is our little gift shop. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so this is a gift shop. Bits of sort of knickknacks There's and little, just... yeah, odd. <laughs> no? But they seem odd. What about these? <laughs> I haven't sold any of the reading sunglasses. And what's that? That is the CD we have in our rooms. The CD? Well, yes. Celtic we have, Mystique. Mm -hmm. We have music playing in our suites when you arrive. Wow. Um, I didn't know people buy CDs anymore. <laughs> wow. 16, is it good? I've listened to it for 10 years. I don't hear it anymore most of the time. What a strange little knickknack shop. And what's over here? Um, all the beer and wine that we sell. Why, why, you can see the dust on top of there. Everything's so dusty. Who's in charge of cleaning? I'm slacking on my job. I appreciate the odd uh, speckle of dust on the wine, the wine <laughs> cellar, but not, not like this. Wow, and look at that. When is that from? 1980 <laughs> what? You laugh, but it is a little out of date, right? Oh, yeah, definitely out of date <sighs> and dusty. Dusty? The actual TV was on. You couldn't see it because of the dust. Um, so it looks like it was high-end to build, really expensive. But yes. It doesn't look like we've had enough money going back into it to keep it sort of... Where, how it, where yeah, it needs to be. Needs yeah, to how be. it should be, right. And what's over here? Um, oh, one of the wedding. weddings we had on the property. This place must be packed. They do 30 to 50 a year. Who runs those? Melody is our events coordinator. And she's a specialist in events and... Um, she was never, like, trained or anything, but how she does... How can you run events if you're not being trained? Common sense sometimes prevails. Mm. Now, what's that there? Landell's Mohican Castle, Winner Winner. Night Stay. Mm -hmm. Stop. You know how many people want a free night? Seriously? Seriously? Yeah. We try to do it once a month. Shall I do one? Yes, please. <laughs> Love this. Love it. <laughs> Ready? So... All right. That's fantastic. You know, <laughs> is there a cell number on there? Um, thank you. Answer machine. Chuck. Congratulations. You have won yourself a free night stay at Landol's Mohican Castle, courtesy of me, Gordon Ramsay. Free dinner? Dinner's not included, no. Oh, Chuck, I'm so sorry. I don't want to piss on your bonfire, but there's no dinner involved. But I'll pay for dinner, Chuck. Best wishes. He's going to be so happy when he hears that fucking he message. Is. There yes, we go. He is. He's going to be floored. Excellent. Uh, amazing, man. It's cluttered and it's dusty. Damn. So you've been here 10 years. What are the problems? Just little things here and there that need to be updated. Most of it's still from when we opened originally, so okay. 13 years old. Now, the owner is no longer involved with the business. He's left it to his ex-wife. Marta, Marta, Jim's ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Right. She runs it now with her son, who's the general manager. Correct. Right. And what's his strengths? Um, I can't tell you business-wise, management-wise, if Jimmy really, in my opinion, has any strengths right. at this point. He has the title of general manager, but I don't think he really fully right. has that role of general manager yet. And he went off to train at hotel school. Where did he come from? No. Jimmy has no training outside of high school. Marta? Does she...? No. She has no training, he has no training. Who's more hands-on? Marta is hands-on. Marta is here, there, and everywhere, and she... Wow. She's, like, the busy bee that never stops. Is she around? Um, I'm sure she's on the property. Let me. Thank you. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to just check around outside, and I look forward sure. to uh, seeing Marta. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, is Marta down there? Wow, this place costs a fortune. What is up here? OK, can you send her up? Gordon would like to meet her. Look at that. Wow. What in the fuck is that over there? Is that a T-Rex? What is that thing? <laughs> yeah. 
Ugh. All these flies. <sighs> Bloody hell. Look at that. So you relax and take your cigarette breaks. Oh, Jesus Christ. And all these flies. That is disgusting. This is a place where people come to relax. What? Man, that's gross. Seriously. Ugh. Horrible. Wow. Hello. Hello. <laughs> You must be Marta. I'm Marta. You must be Gordon. That's right. <laughs> nice to see you. You good? You too. Uh, what an incredible place. Oh, thank you. It's different. It looks like somebody spent a lot of money. Yeah, we did. And how much did you spend building this place? I think it's around six billion. Wow. And what's it worth now? Oh, probably two. Two million. Um, we need help, Gordon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm here to help. I mean, driveway, yeah. woodland, stunning. I mean, yeah. absolutely stunning. Thank you. you. Walk in there, inside it's, it's caked in dust in there. <laughs> it's not dust supposed to be. Oh, it, 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 is, it is, trust me. OK. And well. then the Hamas of horror for me was going up there. Have you been up there recently? Uh, probably about a month ago. Disgusting. <laughs> OK, Flies sorry. everywhere. Not a dozen, a couple of hundred. OK. Thousands. And let me give it to you straight. It looks like staff are taking the piss, going upstairs for a break, putting their cigarettes. In they, a bottle. On the back also. of one really bad fire, the last thing you want to get is a no, second one. That's true. So you're the general manager. I am running it, and I'm trying. Jimmy started a little over a year ago. Right. But he's so tied with the restaurant. So Jimmy runs the kitchen, and you do everything else. So that's a lot on your plate. Oh, well, I help in the kitchen too. <laughs> I do Seriously? the ordering. I do the ordering. <laughs> How come he doesn't do his own ordering? Oh, he would if I told him to. Right. Yeah. But everything on your shoulders, running this place... Yeah, I guess I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah, wow. So, um, I've never done anything like this before, so it's unfound territory for me. OK. In order for me to see where the cracks are, what this place is made of, how good we are, mm -hmm. I've found an amazing couple that have recently just got engaged, uh, and due to the circumstances with the groom, he's having to go off and do military duty in two weeks' time. Oh, OK. So they are coming here, and we are going to host their wedding. OK, when are we doing it? In a couple of days. OK. And it's a very how many important... How 100 guests. 100 guests, OK. 100 guests. So okay. I need to see how this place functions and what you've got, what the standards are like, and okay. just the kind of offerings. OK. Look at it. It should have way more than 30 or 40 events a year. It doesn't make sense. Knowing the castle is losing money by not hosting as many weddings as they should be, I wanted to see how I could improve their standards and increase revenue. Roxanne? Yeah, good nice to, see to you. meet you. Likewise. Hi, good to see you, Eric. How are you? Okay. So, I invited a bride and groom to get married at the castle. First of all, let me say congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. I know you're trying to get married quickly because you're uh, off yeah. Uh, yeah. on duty and. So we want to make this uh, somewhat special. Yeah. Because we're doing this once and there's no rehearsal, right? Right. Let's jump in, shall we? Okay, Come in, perfect. Please. It's my first time here. Ours too. There we go. Oh, dear. It looks like someone's puked on the walls uh, with a lemon meringue pie. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> Look at the ceiling. Yeah, the ceiling <laughs> what is, is that? really scary. Chairs. Oh, dear. Those are really stained what is bad. <laughs> what is that? Spandex? Yeah. They're, they're not nice, are they? Oh, no. dear. That's worse. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> I'm Melody. Hi. Roxanne. Roxanne. Roxanne? Yeah. Yes. Nice and to Eric. meet you. Hi. Eric. Welcome to the castle. Um, let's talk about the food. Um, what do you normally do? Normally, we do buffets. Buffets? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's something from the 1980s. So, what do we do with the tasting of the buffet? We don't do tastings. You don't do oh, tastings? we don't do tastings. No, why not? Because of the kitchen staff, the setup in the kitchen. Not really selling me on a good wedding, so you can <laughs> stay relaxed no, for now, but no. trust me, we're going to taste some food. <laughs> we're going to take a seat, we're going to do mm -hmm. some tastings, and yeah. I'd like to see a menu. Um, don't worry, OK? Get this sorted. Okay. You go there, my darling, okay. please. Probably Thank got you. too many set here. Take a seat, please. Before we do the tasting, is the owner's son here? Jimmy, yes. he's, the, mm -hmm. he's in Jimmy's charge. Here. Mm -hmm. Can we have a quick chat? Yep, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah? Uh, colour's dreadful. Reception lobby, awful. And the linens don't even match. There's white and ivory. There's a lot going on at the, on the bar, yeah, too. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's left yeah. over from another wedding. Dreadful. Jimmy? Yeah. Uh, Chef, he'd like to meet you. Okay. 
Hey. You are Jimmy. I'm Jimmy. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. I spoke to Mum earlier. You yes, are. Let me yes. introduce you to uh, two very special Hi. guests, Roxanne. Hi there, nice Hi. to meet you, Roxanne. Nice to meet you. And Eric. Eric. Eric, nice to meet you as well. Um, so, do you have a chef jacket or? I do. Do you ever wear it or? Um, when, only when I deliver food. Deliver? Well, like, what? bring food out to people. Oh, so you just put the jacket on to carry food? Yeah, so I look fancier. <laughs> so, you normally wear a t-shirt to cook? Yeah, yeah and pants. And pants. Uh, yes. That, that's very kind of you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Anything you recommend? I mean, try to sell it a little bit to the bride and groom. Um, there's certain things on there I've never made before. So, uh, that probably doesn't... Stop two seconds. Yes. <laughs> you've got things on your menu that you've never made before. Well, no one's ever ordered them. But you run a restaurant here. Yes. That's not a buffet. No. You, that's I plated. Should, I should definitely know how to make them, I agree. Yeah. I've never cooked a filet mignon before. You've never cooked a filet mignon? No. Who cooks it? We've never sold one. Fucking <laughs> hell. So no one's ever had a wedding and ordered filet? N not since I've been here, not for me. You've got things on here you've never cooked before. You've yes. never cooked a filet. Correct. So just out of interest, filet mignon comes on. Are you going to go to a culinary school? What happens? Maybe Google how to do it exactly. <laughs> Google? Uh, yes. I mean, I can yeah, do no, that. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Google a filet. Yeah. Just what, to, to watch a, a video. Uh, yes. Our wedding food is really good. Well, I can't wait to taste it. Uh, let's have a look at this and okay, you know, I'll perfect. see you uh, later. Sounds good. Wow. Okay. Well, sorry about that. After learning Jimmy gets his recipes from the internet, I'm starting to feel like I made a mistake inviting the bride and groom to have their wedding here. So we have a stuffed chicken. To give some options for Roxanne and Eric, I told Jimmy to prepare a selection of dishes. Up first, a chicken dish that I couldn't believe was smothered in soggy cheese. Look at that bit there. It's like my granddad's foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. No wonder grandma used to get upset at night. Okay, over medium heat, add olive oil, let it get hot. While Jimmy surfed the internet for how to cook a filet mignon. Let the filets... Let the filets eat a hot pan. We were served a salmon dish. I mean, I wouldn't feed that to my cat. It is bland. It's undercooked. Mm -hmm. It's simply it's raw a in the middle. Slimy it's, almost. Yes. And knowing Jimmy had never cooked a filet mignon, trust me, my expectations weren't high. That steak is terrible. That's overcooked. You'd cook better than that at home, wouldn't you? Yeah. Now I know why there's no tastings available. I mean, terrible. Yeah, terrible, yeah. terrible, terrible. I'm embarrassed and I just want to apologize. I was expecting it. Way better than this. Yeah, I mean, us too, I think. Yeah. Be patient. Let me get to the bottom of this, okay? Okay. <laughs> it's clear the castle standards are low. Okay. And with only two days to put together a wedding, I'm feeling a lot of pressure and I don't want to disappoint Roxanne and Eric. Hi, Hello. Eric, how are you? Well, good. How are you guys feeling? Discouraged. I mean, you know, it's an important day for us and the food's really important, and it's like, I think about this, and I want it to be the best day of my life, and then it's disappointing. It's something you want people to remember for a good reason, not a bad. No, of yeah, course. Yeah, exactly. So. You know, I see lots of young couples, and we host lots of weddings, but that's new territory for me. I've never seen a space member of staff so disconnected to the real deal. I don't think we thought it was gonna be like this. There's only two days till Roxanne and Eric's wedding. And having witnessed the lack of attention to the event space and menu, tonight, I need to see how Martha and Jimmy run their restaurant on a regular night. Hey, how are you? TJ. TJ, good to see you. And this is? I'm Shayla. Shayla, nice to see you. I'm Jimmy's wife. Oh, Jimmy's wife. Yes. Okay, chef's wife. Cook's wife, general manager's wife. Yes. Right. What is he, a GM or a cook? A little bit of both. A little bit of both? Yes. Excellent. Good answer? OK. Good. What do you do, TJ? I'm just the host tonight. Excellent. So... 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 I'm all fucked off. Jimmy, the sea bass... What about it? It needs to go on. It's just I, with this disorder. Okay, I don't... Uh, good evening. Good evening. Hey, Gordon. Howdy. She has a bruschetta listed here, too. Six months on that. We haven't met yet, have we? No. No, Grant. Grant, good to see you. Are you the sous chef? Yes. Hmm. And are you working in the kitchen tonight as well? Yeah, I sort of help them. Wow. What don't you do in this establishment? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything. Ah. Mm. 
Holy crap. So you cook all the fish and meat on the same pot? Uh, we do the meat on the left side and the fish on the right side. It's all on the same plan? Yes. So you're saying that everything on the left doesn't hit the right and everything on the right doesn't hit the left? I've never seen that. OK. It's weird the food sits there. Shayla. Yes, sir. Why do they put food here? Is this what they... This oh, is the warmers, yes. This is the... Only... On the wall? Yes. <laughs> yes, this is what we have. It's crazy. Jesus. But where the kitchen's in there, they just stick this on the wall. So how do you know whose is whose? You just pick up. We take the wrong plates all the time. What a fucked up scenario that is. What is this? Is this done? I think so. I don't have any idea what all this meat goes to right now. What are these two flat irons for? Does anybody know? Uh, here's a flat iron. Medium rare. There's a flat iron. But I don't know what tables they go to. Jesus. Fuck me. Um, I've never said that is a beef stroganoff. What's that? But just, just show me that one. Oh, a beef stroganoff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Bring it down, please. Yes. Charles hard to make. I mean, it looks like prison food. Whose table is that stroganoff? That's mine. That's yours. And what are you waiting for now? Um, the rest. That was uh, on a single ticket, but there were six of them. Seriously? Why is it not on the same ticket? Well, because they wanted separate bills, so I just I wrote them all on separate tickets, because that's how we... But you do that at the end. The kitchen needs one ticket so they can serve all the entrees together. Go. Oh, my god. OMG. What are you waiting for, my darling? Um, one of those fries. I was off. So where are we at here? One French fry. OK, do we have anything on the six top? What's she waiting on? Stroganoff, I guess. And this doesn't really have any sauce in it, but I can't, can't help it that got messed up. Just take it. Uh, you just deserve better. I'm sorry. Oh, here's your stroganoff. Ten minutes later. There we go. Your plate's hot, too, so be careful. Yours looks completely different. Wow, what a mess. What a mess. Oh, jeez. Jimmy, that's been sat there 15 minutes now, this one. What has? This one here. What is it? Yeah, oh, what are you waiting on? I've just, I've never seen this kind of dysfunctional kitchen, so one dish, three minutes later, another dish comes along, and the girls are coming up and seeing the flat iron, seeing the chicken, and just going, because there's no uniform. A table's been waiting. Where's your tickets? Right there. Okay. Just take this medium rare flat iron, then, I guess. We apparently need another castle. Did we make that or not? Someone must have taken the ticket down without us knowing. It was supposed to be medium, and the other lady, her potatoes, garlic mashed, were ice cold. Oh, gosh. They want it more well done. She right. want, they want it more well done. The same piece or another one? No, we'll have to put it back on. I don't okay. I've gathered that the restaurant has absolutely no organization. But what is more alarming is how dependent Jimmy is on his mother to run this business. We did it. That was easy. <laughs> uh, I I'm not going to laugh. Let's just go back to the beginning. Driving in and looking at the place, breathtaking. Walking to the reception, and it's just caked in dust. And that tower in front of the entrance is laden with 5,000 dead flies. Tonight, I just want to see how this place functioned. And hand on heart, I've never seen such a dysfunctional business in all my life. Surely you must know that this is not right. I, I think we know that, yeah. but... You I just, think? I, I speak for myself, and I can say I know that. And yet everybody walks around as if we're doing a great job and laughing and joking, as if to say, we've got something to be proud of. I wouldn't say we're in denial. No, bullshit. I got told when I checked in, Jimmy is the general manager. Can I just tell you the feeling when you walk into this place? There's no authority, there's no responsibility, and staff are just going through the motions. And if you are even going to attempt to step up to that position, you can't go home, pat yourself on the back, saying you're doing a great job. You need to start implementing. Gordon, we would like this to be the starting point of that. You know, we want that. We just, you know, you get a little overwhelmed and you don't know, you know, how to proceed. The, the general consensus in this building is that you are generally running around seven days a week for everybody. That's true. 
And tonight, I witnessed it firsthand. This is no life for any lady in the 60s. No, it isn't. Banging their head against the wall. That is not right. Can I just have two minutes with your mother on my own, please? Yes. This is insane. Honestly, you look like the pot washer's assistant tonight. I know. Sometimes not I right. am the pot washer's no, but just... assistant. Seriously? Yeah. I think I've gotten so used to it. And so I just keep doing it. I know, but you're doing more and more every week, every month, every year. And it's not right. And that must be having a toll somewhere. You can't continue like this. I agree. Has your son taken enough responsibility? I think that it, uh, he probably feels that he has because he's never probably had the life that I've had to know what it's like to work from morning to night. He's never felt the jeopardy that you do on a daily basis. No. Nowhere near it. No one has. And it shows. He knows you're going to do it, and that's the problem. And he's got so used to that mm -hmm. that he's not going to come out of his comfort zone and do any more because he doesn't need to. Yeah. I want Jimmy to wake up and take the burden off your shoulders and step up and start showing some form of responsibility. You should think about a letter, about what you need from him going forward. Think about something strong and speak openly. And if you can commit that to me, then I'm going to commit myself to you and getting this place okay. back on the map. OK? Yeah. Promise? I promise. Thank you. OK. Get some rest. OK. OK. It's very important for hotels that host weddings to not only focus on the event itself, but other services as well. I'd like to order this $79 breakfast in bed package. So I ordered a room service package for Roxanne and Eric. Enjoy. You guys so enjoy. Thank we you. will see you soon. All right. Thought I'd check in on you. How is it? It tastes no. uncooked. Oh, God, it's just going from bad to worse. My apologies. After seeing their disappointment and that nothing was special about the experience, I sent someone from my team to put together a gift basket to show how much higher their standards really need to be. This is just basic stuff. You two dig in. We've got some work to do. Last night, I asked Marta to write a letter to Jimmy outlining her needs for him moving forward. I'm hoping this can show Jimmy he needs to step up. You OK? Um, how long did it take to put this thing together? Probably uh, an hour, hour and a half to think about it. That's I went to it. sleep around 5 a.m. What? You went to sleep at 5 a.m.? Why? Uh... Just thinking about everything that went on and... wishing it wouldn't have been the way it was. And knowing... There's a lot to fix, and just being uh, completely uh, overwhelmed at all the aspects of it, so. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of nights like that. <laughs> that's exactly what he needs to hear, and that's what we've got left in order to get through to him. That's where he needs to feel your pain a little bit, because you've been too good masking over it. Yeah. I, yeah, I do probably do that a lot. You need to stop accepting everything to make things better for yourself now. And that being so easy on your son and, and being a little bit more selfish because you're too kind, too generous. Right, I agree with that. You need a break. Yeah. Quick. Yeah, you're right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jimmy, two seconds, please. Take a seat. Your mother, she left last night. Yes. Upset. I want you to listen to something okay. important. Yes. I just want you to listen, OK? Um, dear Jimmy, I worked 20 years at the coloring book factory, being on call 24-7. I, of course, thought that when we sold the business, we would retire. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. I know you have always seen me work hard, but the financial part of it has been just as stressful. It is so disheartening when we could 
get complaints about such stupid things as dust and uncleanliness. It has to stop. There's no excuse for it. It has to change. No one has more to gain by making the castle successful than you do. Let's make this place what it should be, a great future for all of us. Love, Mom. I just want to say thank you. I know. I know. I love you so. <laughs> you know this can't continue. And where I'm coming from, it's about stepping up. That means putting mum out of the day-to-day -day running and yeah. you getting firm, strong, and making some serious fucking decisions. I don't want you to have the impression that I'm, I'm too proud or I'm a spoiled brat. But I, how much do you want this? I, I, I don't know if there's a real wor word for it, but I want it. I want, I mean. Can I just have two minutes with him? Yes. Please. In the kitchen, get yourself a coffee and close that door. I don't fucking feel it enough. That's all. Mm -hmm. I don't get uh, excited by it. She, your mother, mm -hmm. hasn't got long left mm -hmm. at this pace. And if you've got a pair of balls, mm -hmm. you better start fucking using them. And I want you to use them quick. I don't think you fully understand just what a gift you've got. I don't think I do either. I, th I feel it, but I don't fully have a grip of it. No. And whilst I am here, I want to see you commit. OK. And show me how hungry you are. I will. Yes, sir. And when you see something wrong... Say something. Fucking sort it out, like your mum's been doing. I will. Got it? Got it. It's the day before the wedding, and preparations are underway. Normally, we have a soft drink soda station on the antique hutch down there. While the staff discuss last minute details with Roxanne and Eric, my team and I are completely making over the event space. We're upgrading the drab interior with a modern decor to brighten up the room and create an inviting space. Are we ready? Can we run? Yes. Well, let's go. <laughs> okay. Brace yourselves. <laughs> yeah. What you're about to see is mind blowing. Jump in. Oh my goodness. Welcome. Oh my, oh my good. Oh my goodness. Come on in. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. Oh, it's oh my beautiful. Wow. Oh my God. Now. Oh. Oh wow. Where <laughs> shall we start? Oh my. Just the lighting alone yes. feels more inviting. It's a different world. Gone is that ghastly yellow color. Oh, it's beautiful, Melody. Oh, beyond what I ever could have imagined. I can't believe it's the same place. That's awesome. Complete new paneling all the way around. <laughs> wow. Absolutely oh, breathtaking. It's beautiful. So let's have a little focus on the tables. Brand new chairs. Oh my goodness. It's amazing. Beautiful. Take a seat. <laughs> now we have proper oh elegant goodness. chairs. Oh, look at the chargers. Aren't they beautiful? Check out the floor. Brand new floor. Oh, yeah. So nice. Look at the space over there now with the bar. It's so nice. Like, it's like out of a magazine. This is what it's like during the day. Can you imagine what it's going to be like oh at night? Oh my goodness, you're with right. With the candles lit to the <laughs> table. The lit, yeah. Flickering. This is what we've needed. I mean, we oh. we need guidance. We've just been spinning our tires for so long. Great. And you're happy? I'm happy. Good girl. <laughs> I'm happy. glad you're happy. I'm probably the most excited I've been, except maybe when my babies and grandbabies were born. <laughs> I'm literally that excited. Oh beautiful. my, it's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Now, oh, wow. let's talk food. Yes. Ladies, come and line up here. I'd like to take one of each menus. I've got a plan for the food. Let's focus first on the menu in place for the restaurant. Let's start off at the beginning. French onion soup and a bowl of chili. Oh, wow. We've got the beef stroganoff with wild mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Next to that, you've got the chicken alfredo. I like that. Uh -huh. Let's focus on the big menu for the wedding tonight. Right. The perfect entree is the braised short ribs. Oh, beautiful. Next to that, we've got a local walleye. It's so amazing. Beautifully seared. Oh, look at that. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. Nothing complicated. Wow. Yeah. Everything looks so appetizing, too. Uh, clean. Yes. Clean. Yeah. 
but there is one thing missing, and that's a chef. So yeah. I've arranged for a unique person <laughs> that has been working with me in Vegas for the last five years. She is incredible, and she's going to be your consultant chef. Okay. Let me introduce you to Keisha. Good morning, my darling. Come and stand here, my darling, please. Thank you. Nice to see you guys. So, Martha, this young lady knows her stuff. She's going to help to install somebody on a full-time basis. Okay. But the handover process is going to be part of her responsibility. Are you excited, Grant? Very, very excited. Grant, work closely with her. Absolutely. Now, remember, tonight you're going to step up and run this. The burden is now on your shoulders. I'm prepared to take it. Yeah. Morning. Hello. Hello, gorgeous. Come on. Morning, yeah. ladies. How are you? Amazing. Yeah, yeah. When I check in with Roxanne and Eric to assure them that everything is on track with their wedding. How are you feeling? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to give the heads up. The room's looking gorgeous. Okay. Now let's just set them up. I put Jimmy in charge of managing the entire event from the ceremony to the reception. It's a cool layout. Oh, isn't it pretty here with the sun coming now? Yeah, it is pretty. While the castle has done many events in the past. I'm hoping this wedding not only raises the bar, but puts it on the map as a destinational spot. Jan, how are you? look great, by the way. Ah, huh? so smart. All good? You look smart as well. Yeah. Where's Eric? Uh, he's already up there. Um, how are we looking? Looks great. So yeah. Everything's beautiful. Quick, here's the bride. The bride's coming, everybody. Wow. She looks gorgeous. As they sit down, let's go into the room yes. and let's just go over everything, get the Perfect. team together, yes. and we'll get our timings absolutely nailed. Welcome, everyone, to this beautiful, glorious day of the union of Roxanne and Eric. So you guys aren't used to doing no. plated service. No. It's no. been buffet after buffet. That's gone. Say goodbye to the 1970s. Welcome to the 21st century. Great. Want some finesse. It's a wedding. It's not a funeral. Yes. So Be fun. happy. We get in the weeds, we get ourselves out. It's not a race, guys. Who's the general manager? Jimmy. 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 Excellent. Who's in charge of the kitchen? Grant. Grant. That's right. Talk, communicate. Any uh, last words of advice for the team? Um, just stay positive. You know, it's their big day. We don't want them to see our problems. Yeah, good luck, guys. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you, Jimmy. You. Let's go. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, I hope you enjoyed the ceremony. We're going to head over to the, uh, the event hall. Right, ladies, help sit them down. Got it. Please, quick as you can. Table five. Right here's table 11. Mm -hmm. What would you like? Can you do the short ribs, please? So here we go. Grant takes every ticket and don't okay. accept a ticket until you understand it. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, that's the only way. Of course. Cool. The fish. Can we do the walleye, please? Walleye, OK, very good. OK. So you've got to synchronize with a DJ to announce the bride and group. Perfect. Big moment, this one. Yes, okay, absolutely. Okay, so focus on the timing, yes? Yep. How are you? So when you walk back in, that's when you cue the DJ. Yes. Because the DJ is going to make the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, be upstanding for the bride and groom. Yes. This is a crucial moment now. Yes, sir. I'm going to go up there right now and talk to them and find out what exactly, when they're exactly coming down. As soon as I come back in the room, um, you'll see me walk in the door, so be kind of looking. As soon as I walk in, yeah, but you have to get me. everyone's attention. We will. Yeah. 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 What's all this for? You've, oh, we're only doing the bride and groom. I just want to get their pronunciation what? for the bride and groom. It's just Roxanne and Eric. Oh, you're not you going to give their last name? No, Jimmy. How to announce the bride and groom? Please be upstanding for Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Is it Willar or Gallardi? Is the pronunciation? Jimmy, you should have this nailed. You That's what know. I was told. Gallardi or Gallardi. Gulardi. Gulardi. I don't want to fuck up with the bride and right. groom, OK? So we have to be fucking seamless. Gulardi. Mm -hmm. I'll confirm it. So we've got just to get come, this You just wait outside for me, OK? okay. Yep. Oh, my god. I'm going to let you tell the DJ how to pronounce your last name correctly. All right. You couldn't have been, like, the Smiths or something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to go in and kind of get everyone's attention and go ahead and give me how do you want you would like to be introduced. Mr. and Mrs. Eric Gualdoni. The bride and groom are two minutes away, OK? Be careful, yes? Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. We have a very special couple right outside that door, and we would like to give them a big welcome as they enter the room. Let's have a nice round of applause for the new Mr. and Mrs. Eric Gualdoni. <laughs> At this time, they are going to be making their way to the dance floor to share their first dance together as husband and wife.
We're now serving the entrees. Just make sure all the asparagus are lining the same way. This, okay. The ends are together. Like so? Yes. Five plates, please, Grant. Service, please. And that's the top table. I'm going to give it to the bride. Go. Second table, yeah. Four fish, two beef, yes. Everything looked nice. Oh my gosh, the presentation is beautiful. Yeah, it's awesome. Yes. I love it. Good to hear. I'll Wonderful. come back and check on you soon. Take any plates out of your way here. You're good. Shayla. Shayla, why yes. are you clearing when the whole table hasn't finished? Uh, Melanie. I mean, yes, oh, it's so okay. fucking wrong. So wrong. So his plate is clear right. and she's not playing with the food. Yeah. So from a she woman's point, of course she does. So you yes. know that. So this is yep. what I was saying to you. Right. I can't tell you the obvious because you know this shit. Yeah. I have to okay. pay more attention. Yeah, and I want them looked after like royalty. And so do you, right? Yes, I'm going to see if they want any more champagne right now. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to come back with some champagne to top everybody off, okay? Marta, the atmosphere in here is incredible. It is. <laughs> I mean, it really is. However, Jimmy needs to be on top of things. Right. Yeah. He needs to nail the small attention to details. Okay, yeah. But just look at the atmosphere. The difference is night and day. Yep, they're happy. Let's keep them that way. No. Okay. Get the staff to do that. Put that down. Okay, okay. You're the owner. I know. You are the they owner. They asking me to go get beer and go no. do this. I'm not supposed no. to. They're picking up after you. You're not picking up after okay. them. Okay. Those days have gone. Okay, thank you. How was dinner? I'm waiting for my wife to pass over a plate so I can oh. finish it off. <laughs> How's everything tasting? It's beautiful. Isn't it awesome? I love you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, go ahead. No. Right. You two. Uh, my time is done. Uh, what a day. Uh, yes. You look amazing. Thank Seriously. You so much. I mean, really. Have you had a good day? Thank you. Today was perfect. Yeah. Absolutely uh, perfect. Everything that she could have asked for, yeah. that I could have asked for. Yeah. Yeah. It's been phenomenal. Thank you both for your patience because when we yeah. first met at the beginning of the week, I was more nervous than you two. <laughs> good luck to you both. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, sir. I totally thought when we first got here, we're settling. This isn't what I want, but we need to do this quickly. And now it is the fairy tale that you think when you see a castle. It's yeah. jaw dropping the transformation <laughs> that was made. And how are you feeling first? I'm feeling great. The ceremony was amazing. It was. Yeah. yeah. Who's the general manager? Jimmy is. Who's the owner? I am. <laughs> That's right. And you just oversee it. Okay. I don't want you chasing trash cans anymore. I know. I, I know. don't want you sweeping up after them. Look after yourself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I need 30 seconds with your son. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, I appreciate it so much. Enjoy this place. I will. Okay. <laughs> I will. You deserve it. Uh, thanks so much. Good night. Uh -oh. Good night. I do not want to see your mum sweeping up. I don't either. You need to step up. I couldn't believe you forgot the name of the bride and groom. Yes, that was yeah. bad. However, your mind's in the right place. Yeah. Do not be scared of change. Tonight was a little rough. Yeah. But think of the difference you made on that young couple. I know. They've seemed so appreciative of everything. And the first thing they're going to do, they're going to go and tell all their friends yes. this amazing wedding they've had. Yes. You're going to promise me you're going to stay on track. I'm going to put in the work. I promise. Good luck. Thank you. Take Again. care. Take Have care. a safe trip. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Gordon. Since my last visit, Landol's Mohican Castle has steadily increased their bookings. Keisha has reorganized the kitchen, and with Jimmy's help, they have found a new head chef to take the lead. And Jimmy has finally taken charge as general manager. Well, let's make a plan and figure out what we want to do timing-wise. Allowing his mother to take a step back as an owner. 